How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Steve Bannon. Now, we all know that Steve Bannon has been, I'm not sure if he's been removed. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to say, but he has resigned from Breitbart, and there's been a whole lot of controversy between him and Trump, him and Trump Jr., him and Jared Kushner, a whole lot of things going on. Now, if you're not quite sure what's happening, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what's been happening over the past few weeks, days, maybe even months. Now, of course, we all know that Steve Bannon was the head honcho or one of the head honchos, the leading guy over at Breitbart News for quite a while. At a certain point, he decides to become part of Trump's team. This was pretty much after Trump had been established as the guy, the go to guy as a nominee in the Republican Party. So he came on and try and just make everything go smooth going forward. However, um, there was a lot of things that happened during the time at the White House. A lot of rumors. You had Anthony Scaramucci, who was, I think he was a communications director, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments below. He was there. He was fired before Steve Bannon was fired. And when Scaramucci was fired, he made a few comments as he was exiting, talking about how much he hated Bannon and certain things Bannon would do to himself. I won't get into the details of that. This is a family friendly show, so I'm going to digress. Basically, he said how much he did not like Steve Bannon and how he should not be in the White House. Uh, Trump appeared to defend him. He appeared to stay by his side. But after a certain period of time, I guess it was just too much. And then Steve Bannon was summarily fired. Now, um, there's been a lot of rumors about what Steve Bannon was doing while he was in the White House. You know, um, I think even Trump said it himself. Donald Trump Jr. himself was saying it on Twitter, talking about Bannon was a manipulator, a backstabber, a leaker, the biggest leaker in the West Wing. So it was high time for him to leave. Now, many people like Steve Bannon because of what he says, because of his his political stance. And I like Bannon as well for those particular reasons. Now, what he did in the White House is separate away from his stance on certain issues. OK, I did a video praising Steve Bannon when he went to talk in front of a group of black Republicans about economics, about economic nationalism, about how to press forward in society economically. You know, he's a former banker worked with Goldman Sachs. So I appreciate his perspective on that. I liked him for that. And I like him for that. I'm also a big fan of Breitbart. I go there every day, read a lot of their articles. Some of it you could tell is biased, but I'm a grown man. I know how to filter out some of the bias and some of the things that are on there that I may not, not agree with. Some of the Israel stuff, some of the stuff about uh, people in Trump's administration. Because when I was uh, reading Breitbart when Bannon was there, which was pretty recently, I think he just resigned a couple of days ago, if not yesterday. Um, sometimes I would see things about Jared Kushner and things like that. I didn't really agree with. I know many of you may agree with the things that were said about Jared Kushner that were kind of negative, but I didn't. So I would kind of ignore that stuff. But the most of it, but most of the content on the website, I agreed with. I was right one to one and stuck with it. However, I did not agree with all the content and Bannon was behind a lot of what I did not agree with, although I disagreed with some of that content. I still liked Bannon for his overall message. The problem, in my humble opinion, with Bannon, the reason why he got fired from the Trump administration, the reason why he resigned and or was forced out of Breitbart, and the reason why people like uh, Rebecca Mercer have publicly disavowed him, the reason why a lot of people on the right have disavowed him in general, people in the White House, outside of the White House, regular normies or whatever, is because of his methods of being able to achieve his goals. And that's another thing. When you are in the White House, it can't be so much about you and your goals unless you are the president or somebody that's actually in power. OK, you need to be more worried about trying to push the president's agenda rather than trying to shape his agenda because it's what you want. And I think that's what he was doing in the White House. He had good intentions, in my humble opinion, economic nationalism and, you know, the migration policy is great. But you got to go about doing things a certain kind of way. You can't just kind of bully your way in there. You can't be looking stuff to the media to make yourself appear to be a savior. It's just like this. If you uh, steal something from somebody and then you help them look for it or you try to, 
get yourself higher on the team to get paid money to look for it. That's kind of what Bannon was doing. You know, even though he's like kind of a Robin Hood kind of guy, I steal from the rich and give to the poor, where you're still stealing. So your methods are not right, even though you may have an altruistic or a positive in game in mind. I think that's what the downfall of Steve Bannon was. Uh, allegations of racism and stuff like that, that's par for the course for anybody that's a conservative, especially when you're talking about being a nationalist, an American nationalist. I mean, God forbid you have a, a American flag or something like that. Who wants that when you're talking about people that are on the left? They don't want to have anything to do with somebody that is a nationalist. They think that borders should be broken. Uh, bo there should be no borders. We should just have everybody live on the earth together for the most part. Even though many of them, when I say them, I mean your high liberal elites, they may not believe in having a border wall or any kind of border security or any kind of borders in general between countries. Yet, when you go to their multi-million dollar compound they have a border wall literally around that uh with fencing with spikes on it the whole nine yards armed security dogs uh surveillance cameras all kind of crazy intricate locks lasers you name it okay they have a very highly secure complex and they themselves are also highly secure but they don't want you to have that same kind of security which is what bannon and many others in the white house but especially bannon was trying to push Unfortunately, Bannon just went about doing things the wrong way. If Bannon was to come into the White House and really consult with people and stay in his lane, that's one thing I got to say before we get out of here. You got to stay in your lane and play your position. If you've been hired to do a certain thing, if you were hired to be an advisor, whatever it is, stay within that role. It's not up to you to try and manipulate people or putting certain things in position to make things go your way. OK, you have to be subject to what the president wants to do. It ain't about what you want to do. And I think Bannon just made that messed up there. And of course, the biggest and final messed up was the book. I mean, in the book, he did much of what he did on Breitbart. OK, when you put it out in the book, it's a little bit different. When you put it out on Breitbart, it can be dismissed as just an errant news article or whatever. It could be attributed to whoever the author was on Breitbart, not necessarily to you, even though you're the guy behind it. But then when you put your name on the book, you are marketing it as yourself. And you go through this guy, Michael Wolf, who is a, basically a never Trumper, a Trump hater. It's like, what are you doing? The book was the try to broke the camel's back. If you didn't write that book, then nothing about him comes out from Trump or from Breitbart. He would still be over at Breitbart doing what he wants to do, and he would still not have any kind of public rebuke from Donald Trump or Rebecca Mercer or anybody like that. I've heard that he's trying to get in bed with a Chinese guy right now. Not literally, but he's trying to get some Chinese funding. I guess that was before he was removed from Breitbart, but I don't know what he's going to do right now because Rebecca Mercer was funding if not just Breitbart, but also his private security detail and many other things, some of his travel and the whole nine. But that book, it did something else. Maybe he thought that this would be a tool to be able to get his point of view and his message and his agenda, his platform out there. But what it really ended up doing was backfiring on him and working against him. If you're going to be somebody that is trying to push for a narrative to help Trump. What you don't do is go to a never Trumper and Michael Wolf and then write a book when you disparage the president talking about the meeting that uh, Donald Trump Jr., uh, Paul Manafort, and who else was in there? Uh, Jerry Kushner had with some so-called Russian insiders. You can't go say that that meeting was treasonous, okay? You're saying negative things about Trump. You're allowing negative things about Trump to be said, not only on your platform, but also in the book, which takes us to a whole other level. So when that book was released, I think that was pretty much the beginning of the end. It's really unfortunate because I like Bannon's policies. However, the way, as I, I repeat myself, the way he implemented said policies was just totally wrong. But what do you think? Do you think that Bannon did nothing wrong? Should he still be over at Breitbart? Should he still be in the White House? And if that's your assertion, then please explain to me why. Do you think that what he was doing as it relates to leaking stuff to the media, according to Trump and Donald Trump Jr. on Twitter, uh, leaking stuff to the media, trying to manipulate, going about things in a dishonest at best way? Uh, the, the book, Disparaging Trump, Disparaging we're not disparaging Trump directly because he came out after the book 
uh, excerpts were released. It said that he still is a big Trump supporter. He wants the best for Donald Trump, but to disparage his son-in-law, his son, and also somebody that was in his administration, was that the right thing to do? And then he was talking about, well, I don't think for one moment that they did not go up to Trump's office and then bring the Russians right there. So now, not only are you talking about his son, son-in-law, and somewhat in his staff in a negative way talking about treason, you're also saying that they went to you with it and you were exposed to it. See, now you're just making your time as a Washington, D.C., West Wing insider as you, you're making it like you were a mole to come in there and extract information for your own personal gain. It ain't just about you and what you want, although many of your policies I appreciate. Okay, It's got to be about the team. And if you're going to play a team game, you can't just go out and play one on one million. Play as a team and play your position. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.